Hi Mortgage Coaches, this is Jacob with Support. Uh, this tutorial is to show you how to do a rent versus own flyer. So first thing you want to do is start with a new client. So you can see I've opened one up here and I'm going to call this one Sample Renter. Now what triggers the logic so Edge knows you need to do a rent versus own is when you select the rent toggle right here. So give it a friendly name so you know how to identify this report later in case you create multiple reports for this person. Now when we get into the goals, we want to select one of the goals here, and I'm, I'm going to select it to be a first time home buyer. Now we get to the part where we input the rent details. So we want to put in their current rent, whatever they're paying, and then their annual increase percentage. So it's probably around 3% for most. Now if they do have monthly rent insurance or other monthly rent expenses, you can put them in here. Now the standard deduction field, this is actually a new field that we just added, this allows you to show the standard deduction over time so that when you're doing the tax benefit analysis you can show the standard deduction on the rent side and the home ownership deductions on the home ownership side. So in order to find the standard deduction you would hit the find standard deduction button. This is going to open up an IRS page and as you go through here it's going to ask you a couple of pretty simple questions based on what tax year they're doing, uh, the income range that they're at, and the number of exemptions you expect them to claim. If they paid any additional specific sales tax, you can put that in here as well. And then you want to put in their zip code. And it's going to ask you to verify your city and state, so I'm going to hit continue there. And then it'll ask you if they moved during 2011. Usually this is going to be a no. And then just verify all the results are correct here and then choose continue and it'll spit out what your standard deduction is. So this one in particular has a $939 deduction. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to Edge and input my 939 right here. Now in the next screen it asks some basic questions about their income, their debts, their tax bracket, and their current savings. So while none of this is in red, it's all very valuable information that you should collect. So you definitely want to fill out these parts if you can. Let's say they have 10 grand in non-mortgage debt, and that results in a $600 a month payment. Now when you input the tax bracket, make sure to don't, don't put it in as a decimal. You're actually going to put this in as a percentage. Now, if you don't know your borrower's tax bracket, you can always hit Find Tax Bracket. This takes you over to another IRS site that allows you to find that specific bracket. Now the savings balance, this is what they currently have in the bank. So in a checking account, a CD, money market, whatever they've got right now. So let's say they've got 15,000 and it's growing at a 1% yield. Now the affordability section asks for their mins and maxes. So you definitely want to collect this data from your client. If they've already expressed their interest in a home and you already know this, feel free to skip this part. It's not a required field. But these are great probing questions if this is the first conversation you're having with your client. Now we come to the product screen. Now in the product screen, this is just like any other product screen in Edge where you're just going to input your scenarios as you see fit. So I'm going to put a 30-year fixed FHA. And then of course I'll toggle it over to Yes for FHA. And let's say we're looking at a $250,000 price. And I'm going to put in my 3.5% down. Let's say I can get him a 4% rate on a 30-year term. Make sure and do this in the form of months, guys, not in years. Now if there was an interest-only period, you'd want to indicate the number of months that that interest-only period runs for. Balloon payment you usually won't use too much on a first lien. This is more for second liens where you have a 30 due in 15 or something like that. Now we get to the closing cost detail. Now you can feel free to enter these in the form of ballpark fees, just basic data entry, type it right in. Or you can do these by going into the detail button and this allows you to itemize all your fees. So I'm going to do this as an itemization. Now if you don't have any templates set up yet, you only need to set it up one time and then you can effectively copy your templates. So all you do is add the appropriate fees, select the ones you want to apply here, so I've got just three basic fees in there, and then once I'm done adding all my fees, hit Save as Template. This allows you to give it a name, and then this new template can now be retrieved anytime you're in a product in Edge. So what you can potentially do to copy it is retrieve this template, make any modifications that you want to, then resave this as a new template. That way, for instance, if I pulled in a 30-year fixed FHA template and I wanted to modify it and make it a conventional template, I just have to yank one or two line items and change a couple of the fees. 
and then I can resave that as a new template for my conventional loans. So I'm going to pull in just a standard one. Here's FHA purchase fees. And I'm going to hit apply to loan. Now once you've applied those fees to the loan, it does gray out these fields. So if you need to be able to edit anything from your APR costs, prepaid escrows, non-APR costs, or contributions, you'll have to do those inside the closing cost details. So you'd need to go back in there. Now points and prepaid interest days you can still fill out from this point. And if you want to see what the numeric value is for each one of these, you can always hover your mouse over it and it'll actually tell you what those points or prepaid interest days are actually worth. Now because this is an FHA loan, I want to make sure and input my upfront MIP. And once you enter it, it'll give you a checkbox to add it to the loan amount if you want. The last screen is going to be our escrows. So I'm going to enter my hazard and taxes. Now you can put these in in terms of percentages or dollar amounts and you can toggle between the two using these buttons here. Now I'm going to input my MI because this is pretty important for an FHA loan. Put my factor of 1.25 there. Now we do want it to cut off at 78% but because this is an FHA loan we've got to make sure and put in the 60 months here. This is going to tell Edge that it has to go for five years first then it can drop at LTV. Now make sure and check the box here too if for FHA loans to recalculate the MI payment based on the balance every year. Now once you're done there, if you wanted to add another product, you could feel free to add more. You can add up to three, up to four products. You can add up to four products to compare against the rent side. So feel free to add more if you need to. I'm not going to for this comparison. I'm just going to move along to our analysis screen. All right, so now we get to the analysis summary and this shows you a couple of good metrics. One is you're seeing what the net payments are. Now these net payments, remember, net payments are actually after the tax benefit and the principal is removed from the payment. So we're just looking at the unrecoverable part of the payment. We're looking at the interest they're paying and uh, we're looking at the MI that they're paying. Now down at the bottom left here, you can choose to do either rent versus principal paid and you can see that rent is, is always going to be a negative fee in here and then principal paid is obviously positive. You can do rent versus tax benefit, which is just all the rent they're paying versus all the tax benefit they gain as a homeowner. And then there's our, our new analytical point. This is actually why back in the, one of the previous screens I input the standard deduction. The tax benefit analysis will show what happens if the renter takes the standard deduction each year, what their tax benefit would be, and compares it against home ownership. Now for the long term, we've got total principal paid, and obviously we can see rent, there's no principal being paid. They're just basically giving $334,000 to a landlord over time. And then of course we've got our principal paid for the home ownership option. Now net worth, this is actually a little different. On the rent side, they actually do have a net worth because we indicated that they had $15,000 in their savings account, and that's going to grow at a 1% yield rate. So at the 15 year point, they would have 17.4 in their bank account. So that's what their net worth is on the rent side. Now on the home ownership side, this is actually their total equity plus any assets that you're developing for them. So if you've used a <coughs> if you've <coughs> So if you've used a reinvestment strategy and you've earmarked a certain amount of funds to go back into an investment vehicle or the current savings account, that would be added to their equity to give them a total net worth. Now the last comparison point would be your total interest in MI paid. And naturally the rent, this is just rent paid, 334 over the 15 years period of time. And then on our new 30 year fixed loan, they're paying $148,000 in interest over that same 15 year period of time. Now once you're happy with what the analytics are looking like, make sure and enter your contact information for your borrower. If you don't have a property address, feel free to reuse this street address line. It'll actually appear just below your, your title line on your report. So you can use this as a secondary header. And when you've got all that filled out, it's automatically going to tag the rent versus own for you. And there's a new box here. This one is the payment notes. So when you enter notes here, it's going to put a double asterisk next to the notes you enter here, as well as a double asterisk next to each payment, each PITI payment on your report. So in this case, I would say this payment includes all applicable taxes and insurance. Now this gives you one more chance to take a look at each metric that you chose back in the analysis screen. And if you want to change any of the sidebar text here, feel free to type over this or edit it in any, any way you see fit and it will appear on the report that way. 
Same thing, here's our tax benefit analysis over the five-year point. I might actually put a little bit more information in here about what we're comparing, being the standard deduction on the rent side versus the tax benefit from home ownership on the right side. Then we have our long-term analysis. I've got total interest in MI paid, so I probably want to do a little bit of uh, overhauling on the verbiage that's in here to let my client know exactly what we're trying to show here. And once you're happy with all of that, it's time to, pre it's time to prepare the report. Now to prepare the report, choose email link and then you can hit the generate link button. Now the generate link button will give you a short link. This is our mcedge.tv link. This is also the one that has tracking in it so you want to make sure and hang on to this one because this is the one you're going to send to your client. So what I usually do at this point is I'll right click on it and copy it. My next step would be to open a new email to my client, right click in the body of the email and hit paste and paste this link in there. Then, of course, compose a nice email around it. Ask the borrower or prospective borrower to uh, check out your, your video presentation if you've got one in there. If you want to add a video presentation at this point, you can hit Add Audio Video, and this will bring up a preview of your report and allow you to append a video message. Edge Live, if you get them on the phone, will allow you to do an interactive session where when you highlight anything on your report in Edge Live, it's also going to highlight on their side. Now, Edge Live is also the same thing as your preview screen, so I use this to preview the report before I send it out to my client. Now, here's the asterisk I was talking about. We see we've got two asterisks next to our total payment, and then we've got our two asterisks down here on the left this, that indicate that these are tied together. Now, there is a single asterisk next to the APR. There's also a single asterisk down next to your disclaimer, so make sure that you've got your APR verbiage in there. Now when your client clicks on this report, as long as they leave it open for about 20 seconds, after that, once they close it, you'll actually get notified with an alert if you have chosen to enable the alerting feature. So this checkbox right here to notify you when the report is viewed. So if they do consume that report and then close it, you'll get a notification via email and through your RateWatch client letting you know that the report has been viewed. Now, if you guys have any further questions on this, feel free to email us over at support at mortgagecoach.com. We'd be happy to help you out. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.